<clears throat> this is just going to be a quick video to do a couple of these journal um, journal entries using Excel so that you can see the process of referencing the chart of accounts and then also how that information will flow through to the T accounts and then as well as the trial balance and the financial statements as well. So um, I have critical thinking assignment one pulled up. I'm going to jump to part two data where we can read the different journal um, transactions that happened and so that we don't have to click back and forth over and over I'm going to change the view and I'm going to say new window and what this does is opens up the exact same Excel file as its own separate window so that we can have part 2 open as well as part 2 data open at the same time alternatively you could of course print the data page which would be fine I just can't we can't do that if I'm going to see it on the Excel on the screen at the same time of course and it's maybe you don't like to print or maybe you just won't have the capacity all the time so this is an alternative option for you if you'd like to use it so let me make this a bigger I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit as well okay so on November 1st, so it's saying journalize the transactions for November and December, December explanations are not required. Cell reference the account titles from the chart of accounts tab. So it says, November 1st, we received $16,500 cash to begin the company and issued common stock to Jenny and Josh. So that is an increase to cash as well as an increase to common stock. So in our B5, this is our debit entry where we want to enter cash so we're going to say equals we're going to click on the chart of accounts and we are going to click on cash and you'll notice that the chart of accounts is listed alphabetically so hopefully that makes it easier on you to find what you're looking for um, it also has the classification which financial statement you find it on and what the normal balance is so that might be helpful as you are becoming familiar with these accounts and you're not exactly sure yet it might help you if you print this chart of accounts so that you can look at those and have a better idea and see like in this case we know that the normal balance is a debit so it makes sense that cash is our debit that we're increasing because we're increasing it by 16,500 and then the other half of this is that we've increased common stock so we'll say equals chart of accounts common stock close oh we don't have to close parentheses in the credit um, column, so E6, we're going to say equals and cell reference up to D5 and press enter. So we've done our first journal entry and while we're doing it, we'll just also do requirement two where we're posting it to the T account. And so I already set up all these T accounts for you and you can see that um, they're listed in order of that they're going to show up on the balance sheet so all the assets are listed first and then the liabilities and then the common stock portion of it so we have November 1st a debit to cash and so however we enter the in the journal entry we're always going to enter on the T account so if we debited cash we're going to debit cash here in the T account as well so we'll say equals 16,500 and then we need to credit common stock so we'll come click on the credit column equals 16,500 enter then part two or November 2nd we signed a lease for a building and paid 1,150 for the first month's rent and so we said that that's going to be rent expense and cash so we'll say equals and technically we it looks like right here this should say rent expense and it is saying zero right now so we'll fix that but let's come over here we'll say equals rent expense enter and then the other half of it is cash so now we could pick we can say equals we could go back to the chart of accounts we could come click on cash right here where we already said cash or we could even click on this T account where we have cash listed and rent expense resolved itself it must be because I cell referenced that so um, so now let's post oh we have to put the amount 
1,150 in the debit column. In the credit column, we're going to say equals and cell reference our debit and press enter. So now rent expense will come down and we'll say equals cell reference our rent expense debit. On the cash side, we have November 2nd. We'll say equals cell reference that cash, press enter. And so now we have our first two journal entries. Let's go ahead and do the first four and then I'll show you how to calculate the balances of your T accounts and then we'll also look at the trial balance really quickly. So on the third we purchased canoes for 5800 on account. So that's an increase to canoes, so we'll say equals, I'm just going to sell reference these T accounts now. Canoes, and it was on account, so it's an account payable. It's 5800 cell reference the 5800, post it to our T account, equals, click on our 5800, equals, click on our 5800. On the fourth, we purchased office supplies on account for 850, so that's increasing office supplies, which is our asset. So we're going to list that first, and we now have an accounts payable, so we're going to list that second, which is increasing our liability. That was for 850. post them to our T account. Okay, actually let's do the seventh as well. We earned $1,320 cash for rental uh, of canoes. So we're receiving cash, so we'll say equals, cell reference the cash, and the other half of that is that we've earned money, we've earned service revenue. So we'll say equals rental revenue, and that was 1328 cell reference again we've debited cash so we need on the T account on the debit side we'll sell reference that cash on the revenue that's a credit entry so on the seventh we'll say equals and reference our rental revenue and press enter so you're going to continue on posting your journal entries and each time you complete a journal entry posting it to your T accounts <clears throat> so all those spaces are already there for you. I'm going to show you how to calculate the balance of your T account. And so whatever side is the normal side is where the balance will always be calculated. So for all of your assets, that'll be on the debit side. So here for cash, I'm in H16, the balance row on the debit side. And I'm going to say equals sum open parentheses and sum the entire debit column close parentheses so right now we have equals sum open parentheses h16 colon h15 and so that's saying sum that whole section minus sum open parentheses now we want to select the credit side so i6 through i15 close parentheses enter and it's giving us our current balance on this account. Then as you continue to type in, so let's just put some fake numbers here, you'll see that the, the debit balance continues to change every time I enter a number here. And so that formula is in place now, and every time you continue to add debits and credits to your cash account, the balance will update for you. So you would do that same thing on all of your asset accounts as well as your um, dividends and expense accounts. Then to, to do an account with a normal credit balance, we're going to do the exact same thing except we're going to sum the credits and subtract out the sum of all the debits. So we'll do that on accounts payable, we'll say equals, sum, open parentheses, select N6 and drag down to N8 close parentheses, minus, sum, open parentheses, click and drag down, M6 through M8, close parentheses, enter. And it gives you that number there. So now you might be wondering, can you just copy this formula and paste it down rather than typing that every time? And the answer is, the short answer is yes you can, but you need to double check each time 
and I'll show you why. So, so let's go ahead and copy this, Command C, and we're going to paste it into the, account, the utilities payable, Command V. And it gives us zero, which is true. But up in this formula bar, if you click into it, you can see that it's trying to sum too high. It's trying to go into the um, title as well. And we can just quickly correct that by dragging these down. And so that's fine. Since this is um, this has two rows, instead of pasting the one that came from three rows, we can copy this formula that came from two rows. So Command C, jump down to Phone Payable, Command V, and when you click into the formula bar, you see that it's now exactly correct. So that is nice. Let me show you the potential, the bigger issue, because if it takes the name, it's not that big of an issue. But let's let's copy this again. So Command C, and we'll paste it down in Rental Revenue, Command V, and it's telling us zero. Well, why do you think that is? If we click in the formula bar, because we copied a formula where it only included two rows, that's what it pasted, was only two rows. So we have to come correct it and tell Excel, oh, Sorry, I didn't mean to click right there. We have to come tell Excel, sorry, we meant to do all four, not just those two rows, press enter, and then it corrects it. So can you copy the formula down and down and down? Yes, you can, but each time just click into it and double check that it's highlighting the right area that you want it to be highlighting. So then finally, um, you have to prepare a trial balance, and that lists all of your accounts. And so I just wanted to show you the cell referencing on that. So we'll start with cash. So here in the account title, you can just say equals, and then click on this cash T account and press enter, and it pulls over the title for you. And then you can press in the debit column equals, press on your um, ending balance, and press enter and it pulls that number over for you and you would just continue to do that for every account we have listed and then at the bottom you'll do a sum function so equals sum open parentheses that whole column close parentheses enter and we can um, drag that formula into the right and so we haven't done that yet so I'll show you you see the um, box is highlighted and there's a little square down at the bottom here. And when I hover over it, it changes my cursor to a, a thicker black X or cross. So when it does that, if you click on it, you can click and pull to the right and it will copy that formula over for you. So <clears throat> in different scenarios, like where we have a whole row of totals, that the ability to drag that formula becomes really convenient and so just a I guess just a quick tip to to help you become familiar with some of the tools of Excel and then finally you're going to prepare the the in all the financial statements outside of the cash flow and so for each of these you'll be able to sell reference um, the accounts listed in your trial balance. So we, d we don't have our trial balance fully completed yet, but at the bottom of this, you'll have all of your revenues and expenses. So you can just say equals, click your revenue, where you put your expenses, equal, click your expenses, same thing with the numbers. And so having this trial balance will be nice because it's going to give you each of the accounts and each of the balances that you should pull to each of these financial, financial statements.